Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. You are a Democratic House majority maker. You beat a Republican congressman and helped put uh, your party in charge of the House and even in a position to consider this impeachment. So with that, um, let's talk about the two articles of impeachment. Is this what you were hoping for, a narrow scope? Well, I'll tell you, Dana, uh, none of us came to Congress to impeach the president. So when you talk about what, what our hopes were relative to articles, uh, that's all relative. But I do believe, based on our oath to the Constitution, uh, we have no choice. And I remind everybody watching that uh, we are not the judge. We are the grand jury to determine if the evidence presented is worthy of a trial in the U.S. Senate. Uh, we certainly believe it is. And that's our foremost responsibility. That's our oath to the Constitution. And I do believe the two articles are appropriate. So you will vote yes on both? Based on what I've read, I will, absolutely. And I, and I, and I want to make this clear, too, that, uh, of course, a lot of the conversations about Ukraine and, and the abuse of power, you know, our founders, one of their greatest and foremost fears was foreign meddling in our affairs. Uh, they anticipated that in our Constitution, I believe. They surely did not anticipate a president of the United States inviting it. Uh, but what's most important, and I want to turn everybody's attention to, is obstruction of Congress. Uh, in 1857, Congress made uh, contempt of Congress uh, a crime against the United States. Uh, if we can't obtain documents and witnesses to provide oversight uh, and fulfill our oath to the Constitution, it is a slippery slope, whether a Democrat's in the White House or Republican, everybody should be attuned to that. So you're talking about obstruction of Congress. There was a big debate, I know you know far better than I, in your caucus about whether to add another article of impeachment dealing with obstruction of justice that the Mueller report laid out. In fact, they laid out 10 instances of potential obstruction of justice. But uh, Robert Mueller said it's up to you, Congress, to decide. So by not including that in the articles of impeachment, are you House Democrats essentially saying the president didn't obstruct justice in the Russia investigation? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I do believe that the two articles that have been presented are appropriate, they're concise, uh, and I hope we can accomplish this in an expeditious manner. But, you know, this is, this is, and this is a lot more about the presidency and, and less about the president. We have got to draw a line, whether it be obstruction, obstruction of justice, in this case, obstruction of Congress. Uh, they're both imperatives. Well, let's just stick on Russia for one second, because I've talked to some of your colleagues who are bracing for tough races, who have said bringing uh, Mueller in muddies their arguments back home about the Ukraine situation you were just talking to, talking about, making it harder to explain to constitu constituents. Um, would that have been the case? Would it, have been, would it have been harder for you? And let me just ask you, if there was an article of impeachment on obstruction of justice dealing with Mueller, would you have voted no or yes? Well, let's, so, Dana, relative to this whole thing, you know, there's such a spirit of self-preservation in Congress comprehensively, uh, and we're trying to elevate principle over self-preservation. So when we talk about muddying the waters or how it might affect the next election, that's actually at the root of the greatest problem here in Washington, is too many people focused on their next election, not on justice and, frankly, the Constitution. Uh, since that's all hypothetical, I can't specifically opine, but it's clear from the Mueller report. Uh, there are many cases of potential obstruction. You know, I wish we had been in a position to obtain documents and witnesses to have corroborated that. But I do believe that the two articles are appropriate uh, and the ones on which we'll vote next week. So I know I hear what you're saying. You, this is about doing what's right, following your, your oath as a member of Congress. But you are in a tough district in, in Minnesota. Is it possible that you could lose your seat over voting yes on these two articles? Sure, it's possible. And if I do, if I vote my conscience and I uphold my oath to the Constitution, I will have been done right both by my oath and for posterity. And that's exactly why I did this. In fact, Dana, I promised my daughters the morning after the 2016 election that I'd no longer just be an observer. I'd try to be a participant, not to impeach the president, but to provide oversight. Uh, and if that is my legacy, having done so, uh, I can look in the mirror and rest comfortably uh, in the days to come. And I wish more members here on both sides of the aisle would look at it the same way, because this president will not be in the White House forever. We know that. Uh, and there will be future presidents that may abuse power. And we've got to draw the line in the sand and unify around truth and fact, which I know is complicated these days. That's the understatement of the hour. Uh, Congressman Dean Phillips, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.